So this last video here is going to focus on the two accessory structures related to the digestive system. And so in addition to the gastrointestinal tract, the esophagus through the anus, uh, we also have then these two accessory structures, the liver and the pancreas, which help or assist in the digestion process. Um, the first one here, this is the liver, and this is a figure taken out of your textbook to show the, the, the basic anatomy, the histology of the liver. And the liver is going to be made up of a, of a bunch of these, these functional units referred to as lobules. And so this is right here is represents a hepatic lobule. And each one of these lobules then represents this functional unit. And each one of these lobules then is going to have a central vein in the middle. And on the corners of these lobules, you'll find these three structures. And this is often referred to as this portal triad. And so this is a close-up of that area. And this portal triad includes a branch of the hepatic artery. So this is going to be oxygenated rich or nutrient rich blood coming from the cellular trunk. We also then have a branch of the hepatic portal vein. So this is that blood that's coming from maybe the superior or inferior mesenteric vein right through the hepatic portal system. And finally here we have these branches of the bile ducts. And so these three ducts are going to be apparent on kind of the corners or the periphery of these individual lobules. And in the center of each lobule is then the central vein. And how this works is blood is being brought to the liver again via the arteries or via the portal system. And this blood is then going to move through these very narrow little passageways or sinuses. These are actually sinusoidal capillaries. And as this blood moves through these sinusoidal capillaries, they are going to pass long or next to these hepatocytes. And so all these cube-like cells here, these are hepatocytes, these are the liver cells. And these are the cells involved in bile synthesis, um, some vitamin and nutrient storage. Um, these are involved in plasma protein production, as well as the detoxification that we associate with the liver. And so the blood, as it passes through these sinusoids, is then able to be acted upon by these hepatocytes. And by the time the blood reaches the central vein, it is now going to accumulate into the hepatic veins, which eventually dump into the inferior vena cava. The additional features that we can see here are these green little passageways. And these green passageways, these are these up here bile canaliculi. And really, they're just extracellular space. And so these hepatocytes are going to be producing bile in addition to acting on the blood that's passing through here. And this bile that's produced is going to pass through these canaliculi, again, just through these extracellular spaces, and eventually work its way to the branch of the bile duct. And this is going to be carried off, as we'll see, either to the gallbladder or eventually to the small intestines via the, the larger um, ducts. If we look at the histology slides we have for you, here you can see a nice cross-section of various lobules. So each one of these structures here represents a lobule, and in the very center of them would be the central veins. If we look in then the corner here, and down here, and any really any corner, we should see that portal triad. These ducts here should represent the vein, the artery, as well as then the bile ductule. And, and so again, the lobule is the whole structure here, a central vein is in the middle, and then in the corner of each one of these is where we find this portal triad. And so this next figure here is going to just show a, a close-up of that one corner. And we can see the three different vessels. The large lumen with a very thin wall filled with red blood cells. This is going to be a vein, and more specifically, this is going to be a branch of that hepatic portal vein. So it looks just like the veins look like um, when we looked in the circulatory system. Next to it here, this much smaller one, but a much thicker walled structure, particularly relative to its lumen, this is the artery. So this is going to be a branch of that hepatic artery. And then finally, the, the one that has the, the very nice, maybe simple columnar wall, this is going to be the branch of the bile duct or the hepatic ductule we have on your last list. And so these tend to be pretty easy to see because they're the only ones that have that nice, simple columnar or simple cuboidal epithelial. Whereas the other two, the arteries and the veins, they, they look just like the arteries and veins did when we looked at them earlier. Veins with a large lumen, typically very small wall, and the vein, uh, arteries with a much larger wall, and in this case, a much smaller lumen. And so you should be able to identify these three vessels in each corner of those hepatic lobules. Now I'm going to go back two slides to point out the last feature we have for you here. Within these sinusoids are these 
cells called Kupfer cells. And these, these Kupfer cells are the macrophages of the liver. And so here in this diagram, they're, they're referred to as reticular endothelial cells. And so these, these cells here, these are the Kupfer cells on your list. And again, these are the macrophages that will help in the, the breakdown, the, the phagocytosis of foreign objects, bacteria, red blood cells, and so on. And so for us, we can see those in a model, but we also have special slides that are labeled and are stained to be able to show those. And so this cell here, or the slide here, is showing a close-up. Here's the central vein. All of these very nice circular, almost cuboidal cells, these are the hepatocytes. And all the little clear spaces between them, these are those sinusoids. And this, because of the stain, shows these blackened structures within these sinusoids. And these blackened stain structures here, these are those Kupfer cells. Again, this is a special slide that's labeled, I believe, Kupfer cells, and that shows these cells. Um, we can also see them on the, the models. We have two hepatic models. One's a large close-up of a very narrow stretch, and then the other one shows the, the lobules as well as then a close-up, very similar to that first figure I showed you. So again, with the liver, there's some of the basic gross anatomy we have in the prosection room as well as the liver modules. And then we also have this histology here, these two slides, as well as then the histology models. The last organ that we have here is the pancreas. And the pancreas um, is, is pretty straightforward when it comes to the histology. There are two kind of groups or classes of cells. There's the exocrine cells. These are the cells that produce the serous solution. Um, particularly, it's, it's this pancreatic juice. It's filled with um, important digestive enzymes that are going to be sent to, as you can see from this duct, the small intestine. And so the pancreas, most of the cells of the pancreas are actually producing these, these enzymes, this protein-rich serous solution that's going to then be sent through this, this pancreatic duct into the, the duodenum, the part of the small intestine. And as we've learned before, the serous glands are those that have the granular cytoplasm. So most of the ones in here, kind of the darker pink cells, these are all part of the exocrine or the serous glands that are producing this pancreatic juice, which is important in digestion. The other group of cells that we see within the pancreas are the endocrine cells. And they tend to bundle up in these regions, these lighter regions here. We can see two of them. And these are referred to as the islets of Langerhans. And these pancreatic islets, these are involved in producing uh, hormones. And two in particular that we care about are insulin and glucagon, the two that regulate our blood sugar. And so the pancreas has both endocrine function, these lighter pockets of cells. These are the islets of Langerhans or the pancreatic islets. And these are the ones producing the glucagon and insulin, which help regulate our blood sugar. Whereas then we have the other ones here, the exocrine, and these are serous glands that are producing um, digestive enzymes and proteins involved in digestion that's taking place in the small intestine.